Sorry, I shouldn't have. Um, right, okay. Right, I guess, um, I guess, I guess, I guess we can get, get cracking. Um, one second. Let me just quickly bash a keyboard for a moment. There we are. Right, okay. So, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful 18 people. Maybe more to come, right. So, welcome to my wonderful blabbing about the wonderful world of creature voiceover. So, first of all, let me do the personal biography bit so you know to whom you are listening to. <clears throat> My name is Ellis Knight. I had a very formal start. My name is Ellis Knight. I am a voice actor from the United Kingdom. I come from a horrible, wretched place called Bedford. You've probably never heard of it, um, unless you play Fallout 4. There's a train station named after it, I think. Anyway, I come from there. I have been doing voice acting for about two years now, which isn't long, but in that time, I have done quite a fair bit, especially in the realm of creature voice work. I myself am 19 years old. Uh, what, what else is that I can express? In terms of my uh, VA experience, I have voiced in a lovely handful of video games, including the upcoming Backrooms Lost Tape, EXP War Trauma, um, Burn House Lane, Darkest Dungeons, The Black Reliquary. Um, I've also done a handful of animations. For those of you who may know what Lumi and the Great Big Galaxy is, the indie animated series, I am... One half, alongside the wonderful Abigail Turner, um, the voice of the main villain Void, um, and that is um, that is mainly the uh, personal side of whom I am. And uh, this is something else I want to bring up. It's not going to be skull crushingly boring about myself, but um, anyway, enough about me. I think we should get to what we all came here for. That being, of course, you want to know more about Creature VO. That being the voiceover for creatures and monsters across multiple forms of media, whether it be a video game and animation, which are the most common two, or maybe things like movies and such. So we'll start off with the very, very basic question. What actually is it? That's the important one. Many of you may know this, but it's good to clarify. So creature VO or monster VO, whatever you want to call it, is when a person provides vocal work for a monster or creature or an animal. Typically, and very, very commonly, it is a character that has no dialogue, at least no, um, well, I like to say people words. Um, these characters, let me give us some examples. Those of you who have watched Avatar The Last Airbender, Appa, is um, performed by a person, the famous D. Bradley Baker, along with characters like, this is where my mind goes blank, um, a lot of monsters in video games, for example, games like Left 4 Dead, Back 4 Blood, um, Half-Life, all of these uh, non-dialogue characters, which are given vocals and sounds by people. That is the essence of what creature work is. It is providing non-dialogue sound and audio to creatures using the wonderful power of your own voice. <clears throat> I will say there is one exception to the non-dialogue thing, and that is aliens. Sometimes in creature work, I've done it before, you can voice aliens. Aliens may speak dialogue, but it is incomprehensible alien babble. But I thought I'd just bring that up. Anyway, so let's talk about how, um, you know, how I got into creature VO. So one of my favorite voice actors is Kellen Goff. Those of you who know who Kellen Goff is, he is Diavolo in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. He is uh, famously recently Glamrock Freddy in um, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Um, plenty of famous characters. Now, when I started VO, I looked, I looked into Kellen because, you know, he is, he's my inspiration. I wanted to know a bit more how he got his career going. And I ended up on his website. And I found that he had this thing called a creature demo. And I thought, hmm what's that and i listened to it and it, all these wonderful awfully disgusting sounds filled my ears i was like oh wow this is this is super interesting i, I didn't realize this was a thing i thought people just got their sound effects from shitty stock libraries but it turns out that wasn't the case and i ended up doing a bit more digging into creature vo work and eventually i learned about the bradley baker very famous voice actor um lots of credits and stuff like star wars the clone wars avatar the last airbender he's played the platypus as well which is also incredible but my first creature role that i booked on casting call club it was for an audio drama called beyond the dark 
Now, there were speaking roles, I auditioned for those, and then at the bottom there was the extra role for voicing the zombies, because it was set in a zombie apocalypse world, all that jazz. And I did my audition and sent it in, and the, the book author, Mark Heary, I think his name was, said, this is, this, is, this is really good, yeah, you got the part, you're great. And I sent it off to him, and he said it was great. I didn't get paid, but at the same time, I, I kind of realized, hmm, maybe that's... Uh, Maybe that's something I could, uh, I could, I could, I could look into a bit more, and I did. I ended up doing a bit more digging into how it worked. I watched interviews with D. Randy Baker and saw how he did it, and eventually it just built on and built on. I ended up developing my skills, which I will go into more detail in a moment. <clears throat> now, there's an important thing to establish with Creature Bio World. Let's let's get into the actual filling your brain with information part. Now. Creature VO, monster voiceover, animal stuff, it is not something someone can just do. For example, someone may have a high register, they may have a low register, they may be able to do this certain kind of voice. Creature VO isn't like that, in my opinion, from what I've heard from a lot of people. You see, Creature VO, you will need to train for. It's not like, oh, I've got a high register and I can just do it. You can't just do Creature VO work because you will you will potentially hurt yourself. You need to be trained in order to do it. You need to perfect it, understand the techniques, take the proper measurement. Because if you do Creature VO um, incorrectly or untrained or unexercised, you can damage yourself. It's a very, um, very rigorous um, form of VO. But at the same time, in my opinion, it's the, the most fun form of VO. But... um. Yeah, it is important that you get yourself trained. Now, let me go off the bat and tell you where you can get training. First of all, you can just, I nearly said something very strange then, you can experiment with your voice. But naturally, you must take your time when doing so. What I mean by experimenting with your voice is just when you are alone, if you're thinking about getting into Creature VO, if you are alone and you're wanting to see what you can do or maybe learn some new techniques, it's okay to just have a bit of a play with your voice and see what you can do because that's what I did in between finding auditions for creature work I would just it sounds weird I would just make noises in my spare time um and I would just think what could I do to sound cooler what could I do to sound better and I would just sit at my desk going <laughs> and just making noises like that um so that's one thing you can do and that is an advice that uh, D Bradley Baker himself gave D. Bradley Baker himself saying, you've got all this flesh here in your throat that you can just play with. So maybe that's one thing you could try just to maybe learn your limits. Now, in terms of professional training, there is one class I will recommend, and it is the reason I, I stand in the virtual space before you right now. And that is Michael Schwalbe. If for those of you, Michael Schwalbe, he is the voice, I think his name is Kawaki from Boruto. It might be Boruto, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, along with Half-Life Alex, um, I think he's recently in God of War as well. He, um, he is a former heavy metal singer, and he does an incredible class called um, Extreme Vocals for Extreme Roles that will really help you nail and understand your voice, how to maintain proper vocal health, and some brilliant creature techniques, some of which I will cover here as well. But that is where I recommend you go if you want to get like some serious big boy professional training. And also just because Michael is a wonderful chap. So um, I will be sure to bring that up at the end. But um, <clears throat> second, that's better. Sorry, I've got a stiff back. I need to crack it now and again or else I'll go all rigid. But no, you need to make sure that you're not pushing yourself doing creature work. Because like I said... It can be a form of VO where you could end up um, hurting yourself if you don't know your limit or you're pushing yourself too far. So I just recommend in the beginning of creature work, start light and build your way up. So start simple then start experimenting, start knowing your limits. And the way you do that is just by experimenting and having fun, you know, just sit there and make noises and experiment and think and you know do auditions for creature roles as well they're great material they don't come around often though um i will admit that even myself they don't come around very often creature roles but when they do go ahead and do them give them a go even if you don't get it it's it, it's still practice but um oh, i can't fell over but um there was a point i had next oh yes my golden rule 
um, this is important. My golden rule when you are doing any form of creature work, whether you're experimenting, knowing your limits, my golden rule is if it hurts, you stop. If it hurts, stop. Because if it hurts, that's really bad. You shouldn't do that. And in the beginning, I didn't stop when it hurts. And you, know, you can seriously blow your voice out. And it can be damaging. So if it hurts, stop. That is, uh, that is what I will say on that front when it comes to experimenting. <clears throat> now, that is a basic overview of Creature VO. So what I like to do now is take any questions quickly. If anyone has anything outstanding regarding the um, overview of creature voice acting, I understand I do speak a bit quick, so people may have um, uh, questions. Let me, have a, let me have a peek in the chat. I see someone in the server events chat asking, um, where do you find creature roles? Now, creature roles, you can find them the same way you find normal auditions. The only issue is they are nowhere near as common as speaking roles. Nowhere near as common. And that's why when I see a creature role appear, I'm like, oh, 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 and I'm all happy. Um, so in terms of that, it's really just like any other audition. The main way I've booked a lot of my creature roles, for example, The Hunger, The Dullers, um, The Hungers, The Dullers, and uh, ones I can't announce, unfortunately, I've done a lot of those through self-marketing with my demo reel, which I will explain in a moment. But in terms of finding creature roles, it is just a matter of finding them like any other audition at the moment. And like I said, they are a little bit rarer than the uh, common speaking role. Would you say learning metal growling is analogous to what might... <clears throat> Would you say, would you say, let's, I can't read. Would you say learning metal growling is analogous to what you might do for some creature? Work? That's an interesting point. So a lot, a lot of um, metal vocalists do creature VO work because they have the experience to it. So learning any heavy metal techniques is great. Michael Schwalbe used to be a, a heavy metal singer. He used to have that, he used to have like the really long frilly, um, not frilly, really long um, like rock star hair. So any, anyone who's sung heavy metal, which I don't think it'll be many of you, um, it is a great technique to learn and it can feed into um, creature VO work very well. For example, Dead by Daylight, a lot of the killers are voiced by heavy metal singers. And there's a game in indie development right now, a brilliant game called Rose and Locket. Um, and in the game of the Seven Deadly Sins, and Raph, uh, a bit, not to do with heavy metal singers, but Raph is voiced by this massive, um, massive wrestler, which is great. But um, learning heavy metal techniques can be great uh, because they're extreme vocals. Um, does that does that answer your question, Mark? I was tempted to make a a high Mark joke, but I think you may have heard too many. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, do you sometimes edit your noises sometimes? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Um, in terms of editing sounds, I've only ever done it once. And <clears throat> that is because um, it was a request from the client. So a lot of the time, I think Creature VO holds so much more value when it's all raw and organic, as I like to put it. Editing creature work to me just makes it a little less special because a lot of people could make a eh or right noise and then edit it to make it better. The one time I edited my vocals was for the Backrooms Lost Tape. I voiced the Dullers, who are the weird stringy men that run around. Now, um, my client said I wanted to sound like the one from the original video, and I said, okay. Um, okay, right. And I, I did the best I could and he listened to it and said, this is good. This is really good, but it's not quite there yet. And I said, well, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to edit it then slightly. And he was like, oh, yeah, okay, that, that's, that's totally fine. And the way I achieved that was by using some snakeskin distortion, which made it fully, um, much more, because the way these dollars sounded, they sounded very compressed and very, very ragged. So I could do the ragged part. I'll see if I can do it now. <laughs> And then you needed the compression, which is what the snakeskin distortion did for it. 
So that is the only time I've ever edited um, edited my um, uh, audio because uh, I feel having it be more organic is it, it makes it so much more valuable. Um, right. Next question. Who who did I do my demo reel with? So. For, for your guys' information, um, much like a lot of areas of VO, character, I'll, I'll go into this now, actually. So there's character, there's character demo reels, there's commercial demo reels, there's narration demo reels. There are creature demo reels. They exist. They're a thing. I'm sure a lot of you knew that. Now, the wonderful thing about a creature demo reel, I find, is they are wonderfully cheap. All right? Now, with a character demo, you've got to get mixing, you've got to get scripting, you've got to get a director if you want to go serious with it. That could cost somewhere between 300 to 1,000, depending on who you go with, some professional, professional, blah, 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 blah. My creature demo reel, which has secured me uh, 10 plus jobs, uh, representation, um, cost me $50. And that is just because I paid a mixer just to master the audio a bit and just say, hey, could you, could, could you touch it up a little bit, please? And he was like, yeah, sure. I had a massive rant about something else while he was doing it, but he touched up and that was it. The reason Creature Demo Rails are so cheap is because you don't need a scripter. Uh, you, you really don't. If you know what you're doing, you don't, you don't need uh, a scripter. Because one, you're not speaking people words. Uh, also, you don't need sound effects. I've never seen a creature demo reel that has sound effects, music, none of that. And the reason is, is because we want to hear the sounds. We want to take it into our ear holes and go, oh, how awful, how horrible those noises are. I love it. And music and sound effects will just get in the way. Um, D. Bradley Baker, I don't believe he has, um, he has uh, sound effects on his creature demo reels. He has a... because d bradley's the king he's got so many little demo reels of like birds tigers swamps the swamp one has one but that's just an overall collage but he's d bradley baker so i ain't gonna argue with him but um no so creature demo reel is brilliant because you don't need a scripter you don't need a mixer unless you want to master the audio a bit and make it sound a you know, little bit nicer and you don't really need a director either all you need to do is have a good head on your shoulders and understand um how creature uh, creature bo works which is why you're here. It's brilliant, isn't it? But in terms of um, who I got my creature demo... Sorry, burbling, pardon me. Uh, in terms of who I got my demo reel done with, um, it was a person who doesn't do mixing anymore. Um, uh, so that... <laughs> it was a new creature being made. That's what I tell myself at the dinner table. Anyway. Um, it was someone who doesn't do mixing anymore, but um, like I said, you don't really need anyone for a creature demo reel unless you want a mixer or maybe like maybe uh, director. I'll see if I can drop their name. Um, but let me hold on. Do I have any teacher and coach recommendations? Uh, coach, no, I don't know any creature coaches. Teacher, Michael Schwabi. Uh, Michael Schwabi does his class um, about extreme vocals and creature work. I'd highly recommend him. Also, if you reach out to him after the class, he um, he can sometimes message you back um, and stay in contact with you. For example, when I did my most recent creature demo reel, I just remembered now, I did send it to him and say, hey, um, what do you think of this? And he came back to me and said, oh, this is amazing. Maybe you could just move this here. Maybe you could tweak that. But overall, it's amazing. He's a really nice guy to get to know and stay in contact with because he can be really useful. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Cheers. I'm not sure if he does mixing anymore, but um, worth looking into. Oh, he does. Oh, nice. Right. So before I continue asking any further questions, if you have any questions, just pause them for the moment. Any ones that have been written already, I'll get to after I'm done with this, and then I'll open questions again. In terms of a creature demo reel, what makes it special? Because on the surface, it can seem incredibly simple. I make noises, I glue them together, I send that to the person. In theory, yes. Um, in expansion, no. Now, the way that a creature demo reel works is the same way a character demo reel works. You're showing off characters. You're showing off scenes. Just not with as much detail as a character demo reel. You know, there's no music, there's no sound effects. There's just you and your voice. Now, 
when a company wants to hire someone to do a dog, right? A company wants to hire a voice actor to do the voice of a dog or like, I, I don't know, an animal or something. Are they more likely to hire someone whose demo reel just has one bark or are they more likely to hire someone whose demo reel has a bark, a sniff, a whimper, a, um, what the fuck kind of noises the dog make? Pants. They're more likely to hire the second person. And that's because they've shown off more of a range. When people hire a dog, they don't just hire the bark. They hire the full package. And your demo reel needs to show you have the full package. That's what I mean when it comes to scenes with a demo reel. One person could just bark in their demo reel. The other person, you could have the dog. They could have a scene. They could have the dog go up to something, sniff it, then whine, and then suddenly bark and pan and bark and be happy. That's a scene. And in that scene, they have shown acting capabilities as a creature, or a dog in this case. I won't classify dog as a creature. Um, you know, go on, I mean, umbrella term. Um, they've shown acting skill. They've also shown a variety of noises for that creature slash animal. And that's what I mean. In your creature demo reel, you still have to show a scene. Because it'll just get the message across so much more that you know what you're doing. It shows your skill. For example, a lot of people will look at a creature and just see it as that. They'll see it as just a noise. What will make you so much more special is if you dive into that, if you, know, if you tear it open and crawl on in. For example, let's take a zombie. We've seen zombies, they're a dime a dozen, um, they're everywhere. But just because they're so simple doesn't mean they don't have character, they have a want. So let us see that want. Even if it's something as simple as, I want to eat someone, right, you know, I want to take a bite of some human. Let us see that. Let us see the character of this zombie. So, for example, let's take, um, I want you to ask yourself this. They're making a new Resident Evil, all right? They want to cast some zombie noises. So in the events chat, I want you folks to tell me what noises may they want for the zombies? What type of noises may they want for the zombies? In events chat, tell me what type of noises they may want. Growls, yep, growling, sniffing. Damage, yep, brilliant one, heavy breathing. Damage is a good one. Damage is a very important one. Eating, another really good one. Slurps, gross, but yeah. Gargles, yep. Groaning snarls. What about, yep, dying. I'll classify that as. Falling, dying, yep. So what you've all just given me there is your scene. You've just given me your scene, haven't you? Because let's take, all right, hold, hold, the, hold the noises. Hold, hold the noises now, all right? Stick on the handbrake. But um, you've all just given me a scene there. So from this, here's what I do. I know what this company is looking for. I know what they'll listen for. So my scene would be, there is a zombie groaning. It suddenly detects someone and snarls. It grabs them and bites them and slurps them and attacks them. Suddenly, another survivor comes. They hit me. I make a damage sound. They hit me again. I die. That's the scene that shows your acting potential as a zombie. And it shows your variety in sound making for that creature. So. When you go to make your slots for a demo reel, a creature demo reel, ask yourself this. What am I? What noises will the client be looking for when they listen to this? It could be an alien. It could be a zombie. It could be whatever you want to put in there. What noises could they be listening for? Okay, I've got these noises laid out in front of me. How can I make a scene out of these noises? Oh, maybe I'm... um. Maybe I'm a, oh gosh, let me think. Uh, maybe I'm a cat. Maybe I'm like, maybe I'm like Ian, maybe. And I'm a cat. And oh, what noises do they want for a cat? They want meowing, maybe some hissing, some purring, some uh, murps, as, as best as I could pronounce it. How can I make a scene out of that? Oh, well, maybe Ian, uh, maybe uh, Ian goes up to, his owner and meows asking for food, but the owner says no. So I, I, I hiss a little bit. But I'm sure I'm sure Ian will actually do that. Um, and maybe he hisses a little bit, and then maybe the owner goes, "All oh, right," and they bring out the food. And maybe I make a murp sound and I eat as I purr. 
there's your scene. Oh, he doesn't make noises. <laughs> sure, whatever. You're ruining my example. But do you get what I mean? Think of what creature you are. Lay the sounds out in front of you and make a scene out of them. And that is a slot for your demo reel. You don't need a second actor. You don't need any human words to make a scene. You just need yourself. Show your capability as an actor and show your capability to give variety. No one hires a dog for just the bark. They hire the whole dog. Now, in terms of a creature demo reel, I would recommend the same length as the average character demo reel. My one, my one for example, is... Um, how long is mine? Because it's, 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 it's really not that long. My creature demo reel, uh, which has done me extremely well, is just a minute. And it, it, it's just one minute. You don't need to pad it out. Because here's what will happen. You'll have all your good slots. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. But then you think, oh, it's, oh, it's not long enough. Oh, oh, what shall I do? And what you'll start doing is um, just repeating yourself. The important thing with a creature demo reel, when you're doing your slots, make sure they don't sound the same. Okay? That each slot, like a character demo reel, has got to be distinct from each other. Make the next one in the sequence distinct. For example, you wouldn't have a deep creature next to a deep creature next to a deep creature because what the client will do will go, oh, that was good. That was a bit the same. That was the same. Oh, I'm bored now. I'll click off. Make sure all the creatures in your demo reel are distinct from each other because that keeps it fresh and new and clients will listen. They'll breeze through. They'll smile. They'll glide through paying your rent when you, do, when you, when you work for them. So just make sure, like a character demo reel, each slot is distinct from each other. What else have I got to cover with a creature demo reel? Hmm. I think that just about covers it. And the great thing about a creature demo reel is you're not, you're not binded by any script. You're not binded by any briefing. You can, these creatures, they can be whatever you want. You know, they can have four arms. They could have eyes for nipples, they can be whatever you want. You can have fun with these creatures. You know, they're your monsters. Imagine them however you'd wish them to be. And just have fun, experiment, think what sounds good. So that covers the demo reel stance of things. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll go to that in a second, but I'm gonna go back to the questions that were asked before I started going on about that. So, uh, are there any sounds such creatures that you feel are essential to have showcased in a creature demo reel? Hmm, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a good one, actually. Um, it's really down to what you are capable of. Um, it, it's really down to what you're capable of, but I think showing a good range, um, for example, one thing I always got told was acting skill is number one, vari uh, variety and range is second. So naturally showing a variation in range, something high. Um, I can't go too high, but I can go high. And then something deeper and something mid. That's always great. Um, try and show off different creature vocal skills. For example, if you can do really gargly stuff and wet stuff, I know that sounds nasty, but show that off. Because, ah, this is the point I forgot to make. With a creature demo reel, uh, no client will be going into it looking for the exact thing they need, the exact thing they have in mind, because they won't find it. That'd be really difficult. But if you're able to show off so many skills in your demo reel, they can mix and match. They can go, oh, they can do uh, a grumble. Oh, they can do, like, wetness. Oh, they can um, do uh, high range. Oh, I merged those together. Oh, um, I may have what I need. I'll send them an email. So... In terms of ones that, that are essential, I would say showing off a range is essential. Um, one, because it will keep your demo reel nice and fresh. Um, along with that, I think some good ones to show off is the ability to growl. That's a good one. The ability to snarl. That's a good one. Growling, I'd say, is pretty essential because growling is uh, quite a useful tool in a lot of creature vocals. Um, wetness is one that's really good to show off. Wetness isn't really hard. It's literally just having a load of saliva in your mouth and making the sort of um, gargly sounds. I think the boomer from Left 4 Dead, uh, something like that, or those weird bloaty guys from Dead Island. Um, stuff like that. That's a really good one to show off as well. Because the more skills you can show off, uh, the more they can mix and match and see your potential. So 
Yes, I believe I believe that, that that's that's that one. Uh, but next question. You're scared. So blah, blah, blah. Uh, how do you differentiate regular creature like monster, alien, etc., versus creature, aka like animal, dogs, and cats? So I saw a creature demo reel once when someone on a website expecting Cassianos only heard barking, and hissing. So I was going to uh, fun fact. I was going to include animals on my uh, creature demo reel. And then I was told by Michael Schwabi, you don't need to do that. Um, you can have a completely separate one for that. Because it, it, that, what, what Phoebe mentions is the exact problem. If I saw a creature demo reel, I'd want to hear monsters and zombies and giant scorpions and all that. But if I heard, like, dogs and cats, I'd be confused. I'd think, what the, what the fuck is this? Um, so how do you differentiate them? Um, it, it's, it, it's fairly simple. Um, a lot of folks will classify it under um, an animal reel. They may do it separately. Um, if it is, if they are in the same demo reel, um, if they are in the same demo reel, they will be separate. They won't be mixed and matched. Uh, for example, I think a lot of Kellen Goff's animal ones are near the end of his demo reel. But um, for example, like the one you've mentioned, Phoebe, is uh, a problem on their behalf um, because you uh, you shouldn't have you shouldn't call it a creature demo reel if it's just animals. Um, but if it's mixed and matched, that's okay so long as um, the client knows what they're looking for. So w what I mean by that is, yes, if it has monsters in it, that's okay. The client knows they're looking for an animal and they've asked for an animal in your demo reel. They'll know it's there and they'll listen to it and they'll find it. But I would f see it best to make that demo reel separately. That's how I differentiate. I, the way I differentiate is creatures are creatures, animals are animals. Um, right. I have had issues monologuing in a monstrous voice needing the force for air. Are they super fast selling auction? Yes. Uh, so... Um, is, is Scorp still here? Is Scorp still here? Because I've got to ask him a question about how he breathes. Uh, right, Scorp. When you inhale to do a monologue, do your shoulders go up? Like, breathe in now. Do, breathe in now. Are your shoulders going up? Okay, but are you locking your shoulders in place by doing that? Okay, but are you still breathing into your chest? Okay, you're breathing wrong. I know that sounds weird, but that is a common issue. You know when I, I suffered with this issue, especially when you're doing monstrous voices and you're speaking people words, it could be so easy to run out of breath. Now, the way I was taught was you breathe it, when you inhale, you breathe into your belly, then you breathe into your back, which sounds weird, but when you imagine, when you actually do it and imagine it, it can become very clear. Sort of like, um, let, me, let me do it now. It's like your back will sort of jet out a bit. It's like, it'll be like you're turning into the hunchback of Notre Dame. So you breathe into your belly, you breathe into your back, then you breathe into your chest. And now you've got this big, you have this big, big tank of oxygen inside you now. That's the way I was taught to do it, to help conserve your oxygen. Because you're taking in more air. So you breathe into your belly, you breathe into your back, and then you breathe into your chest. Most people will breathe into their chest first. Nah, you've wasted all that uh, potential air space now. So you breathe into your belly, you breathe into your back, and then you breathe into your chest. And then you've got wonderful loads of air. Um, right. Uh, da, 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 I think that is the... Uh, yes, that is all the questions from previously. So does anyone have any questions now? So if you have any questions now, feel free to go ahead and ask them. The, regarding what we have just discussed. If you have any questions regarding what we just discussed, ask them now. Bad. I shall tell you what I, I, I need to tell. My mum's been asking me what I want for Christmas. I'm going to ask for a stool for this booth so I can just sit down when I'm in here.
So while we see if any questions coming, because I know people are typing, I'm just going to put some music on for myself. Right. One moment. There we go. Right. Questions. Monster voices are quite intensive. Does that affect how long you will record a session for? It can do, yes. Now, at the moment, I've never done a um, recording session with the director. It, I, I, a lot of my creature, all of it, in fact, has been self-directed. But yes, it does affect it. Let's take Fiddlesticks, for example. Those of you who um, play League of Legends will know Fiddlesticks. He's voiced by Kellen Goff as well. Now, Kellen Goff, a strong professional in creature voice work, did a video about the voice for Fiddlesticks. And for those of you who don't know what Fiddlesticks sounds like, he works on inhales and exhales. So he will sound like... <laughs> stuff like that. Kellen Goff sat in his car in this video and said, when I do the voice for Fiddlesticks, I can do it for about two minutes. Two minutes. That's Kellen Goff's solid professional. Two minutes. Um, see, it's knocked me down a bit. <clears throat> so, yes, it can. For example, when I did The Hunger, I, I could only do it for about 10, 50, like 10, 5, 10 minutes. Um, mainly due to the fact that I was ill. I had COVID at the time. Um, and I had to do it because I had to get on a plane the next day and I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't wait. But, now, the is here's the issue with this. A lot of people will think, oh, no, I, I, I can't do it for long. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to pause. Oh, the director's going to be mad at me. No, no, I'll just push through it. No, don't, stop. No, sit, sit, sit down. A director, a good director, will respect you a lot more if you take a bit of rest. Be aware this director will know that what you're doing is strenuous. So if you, if you say, like, oh, hey, I'm hurting a bit. Can I go get some water? Can I go have a bit of vocal rest for, like, half an hour to an hour they're not going to crack the whip and go no no get back to work i'm not going to do that if they're good um so it's okay if you need vocal rest to to, to have rest right it's, it's not a crime they're not going to give you the sack and throw you out the window um but yes it does affect um how long my sessions are but at the same time i prepare i know what i'm going to do so i take the least amount of time possible because if you don't know what you're doing, you spend a lot of time and a lot of your vocal strength, ex like, you know, trying to get it right, being like, <coughs> oh, no, that doesn't sound right. Um, and you'll wear yourself down. This is, um, this is advice I got from Michael as well. He was like, you need to be prepared when you go in. You need to be ready when you go in there. So you take as little time as possible to deliver the best you can. I decided to do a museum audio guide all, st all standing up. In a oh, yeah, it's awful. It's sort of a pretty dead on fiddlesticks. Uh, when doing creature noises, is it all just the voice, or do you also use your hands, metal cans, and other crazy stuff? Fun fact, uh, yes, I do. Um, every time I do it, though, I let the client know. I say to them, oh, hey, I'm going to use this. Is that okay? For example, I did um, some noises for um, this this little little project of mine. I did Pyramid Head. And I had a big plastic mario cube you know the question mark blocks with an opening in the bottom and i did all of my heavy breathing into the box and i think as well for the lion king whoever did the rules of the lions uh, did it by uh, doing it into a metal uh, a metal bin or trash can as one may say in terms of hands um sometimes yes uh fun fact as well for example, uh, let's take Pingu, for example. Weird one, but let's take Pingu. The man who voices Pingu uh, also voiced every other character, including Pinga, his little brother. And he used his hands to, uh, used his finger to, like, do that sort of thing on his lip, which gave Pinga that sort of baby dribbling sound, like, <laughs> like that. So, yes, they can be useful. Just make sure that your client knows, so... When they hear it, they're not like, why do you sound like that? Have you edited this? And you would be like, no, no, no. It was, it was a bin. Um, 
Do you have better luck with doing creature voices right after waking up, or at least when your voice is most fresh? So, this is a good time for me to tell you about how um, to prep for creature work. So this is a good question. When you plan, when you know you have creature work to do, get a full night's sleep, get a wonderful night's sleep, freshen up, be all, be all good, hydrate the night before, and continue hydrating through the next day. So if you hydrate the night before, your vocal cords will be all lovely and moist still, but that's a, that's a, I'm not going to be one of these people who shit their pants and they hear the word moist. Um, make sure your vocal cords are nice, nice and moist by drinking the, um, the night before. And then when you wake up the next day, be sure to continue hydrating because if your vocal cords are not hydrated, it'll hurt. That's when the hurting will start. It's really important you stay hydrated doing creature vocal work. And like, like the wonderful Patrick says, hi Patrick, by the way, uh, stay hydrated. Like I, I like to have um, the picture, that picture of Sylvester Stallone in the fourth Spy Kids movie pointing out the cinema screen and saying, hey you, hydrate. Just make sure you stay hydrated. Um, and then, you know, wake up, because when you wake up, um, you know, you've got to get fresh up. You've got to wake yourself up and all that. And when you're about to record, do some vocal exercises. That's a must, all right? It'll get you ready. So the exercises I like to do are as followed. <coughs> it's not that. It's not that. I like to do um, 10 vocal sirens. For what, those of you who don't know what vocal sirens are, they're, they're, they're very simple. You just kind of, uh, you, kind of <laughs> you kind of just go, <coughs> you go, you, you start at the bottom, you go up, you go over, and then back down. Do 10 of those. Just 10. Then, I like to do what are called lip trills. For those of you who, um, for those of you who have been babies, um, you probably did this a lot. Um, <clears throat> basically, it's when you press your lips together and you blow through them. So you make, you make this sound. So your lips are kind of flapping very rapidly. There's a lot of weird terminology when it comes to creature work. Um, I like to do that for two minutes. So just... I shan't do it for the full two minutes in front of you. Um, but that's really great. That's a really great exercise I love to do. If you're struggling to do it, because some of you may go... And you sound a bit like you're a car that's like not starting. Um, get your two pointer fingers, uh, put them at um, either side of your lips, um, you know, the, the corners of your lips, and just push together a little bit. That'll help. So you'd be like. <laughs> now, I wouldn't recommend doing this in front of someone because you are likely to shower them in spit. So just that's just the heads up. Um... <laughs> and then after that, I like to uh, hum up the octaves five times, gently, just gently. So hum up the octaves, mm -hmm. just like that, five times, nice and gently. And after you do that, you'll be like, oh, I feel like a, a new man or a new woman or a new non-binary folk. Um, and you'll feel great. And then you can get going. That is my um, guide to getting ready to do actual creature work. Now, does anyone else have any questions? about what we've just discussed. If not, I will move on to the next part. I will uh, I'll count to ten in my head so as, to, as to not intimidate you. Does tea affect your voice? This is interesting. There's a lot of misconceptions about stuff that harms your voice. Um, a lot of people think drinking milk is... I'll get to tea in a second, but... Um, tea? It's... It's... it's it, like, when I drink tea, it's fine. Tea really has no more benefit than, than water does, if you ask me. A lot, of, a lot of people think tea is better because it's warm. 
yeah, it's 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 kind of, it, it's okay, but truth be told, that T's not touching your vocal vo- vocal cord, so it's not really going to have much more of a different effect. Um, some common misconceptions: milk isn't bad for you. If you're a voice actor, you don't have to go dairy free. You can drink milk. Don't worry about it. The only the only issue that comes with drinking milk is it makes you a bit more mucusy, so you may have a few more. Um, pops uh hucks as i like to call them which is when um some like mucus in your throat goes <laughs> which isn't nice to listen to but at the same time it won't harm you it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you i would just not recommend drinking milk before recording yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't go some milk before recording by all means when it's your day off have as much milk as you like have it straight out the cow if you want um coffee as well coffee same scenario as milk it's not bad for you just don't drink it before recording. Tea, though. Tea has the same effect as water for me. Yeah, it can actually, Jaden. I'll get to that in a second. But let me get through, let me get these other questions first. Do you use different areas in your mouth to create sound? Yes, I do. Um, so, for example, if I'm doing something guttural, and guttural literally means you use your throat. Um... If I'm doing something big and fat and blubbery, I use the back of my mouth and the back of my throat. <laughs> you really get that nice guttural reverb, which is really, which is, uh, which is really wonderful for those fatty creatures. So if you, do, if you want to do something guttural and reverby, you really want to use the, uh, your throat and the back, of, like the back of your throat and um, like the back of your mouth. But if you're doing something a bit more high pitched, you, uh, a bit more pingy, you would use the front of your mouth, a bit like where your teeth, uh, where your teeth are. You, you know, where you speak out of your mouth. So you'd be like <laughs> something like that. Um, your cheeks are great because depending on uh, the way your cheeks are, you can let you can have more air, more area for sound to bounce around. So, for example, if I have my cheeks really sucked in, like. <laughs> There's not much noise for sound travel, but if I have them big, like I'm doing a guttural creature again, I can have them be very <laughs> and carry all that sound. It gives the illusion that you sound bigger. And I'll give you a good tip. Just because you're big doesn't mean you have to be louder. All right. Now, say, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to burp again. Pardon me. Sorry. So. Let's say you're a big creature. That doesn't technically mean you have to be louder. Great trick is... Just get closer to the microphone. Simple as that. My first, my first slot in my creature demo, I sound massive. But I wasn't being loud. I was just really close to the microphone. And it, it made me sound huge. You're big and hulking. It's a simple trick that not many folks consider. Um, another one is, if you want to have the illusion of being bigger, closing off your nose is a great one. So if you close off your nose, just pinch, pinch your nose shut, keep, keep your mouth open though so you don't die, um, it gives like a resonance. It's a bit like um, closing valves off on a wind instrument. So if you do that, you'll sound bigger, so you go from <laughs> bigger. So this is without the nose, without plugging my nose. <laughs> This is with plugging my nose. It gives more area for the sound to bounce around. Um, in terms of other areas of my mouth, when I'm doing something really scratchy, I like to use my throat. For example, like... I like to use the bottom of my throat for that bit. Uh, but once again, just like be careful with that. Ease in... When, if you want to try stuff like this, remember, take it slow and ease into it. Don't go guns blazing. Um, do I use the my mouth? Uh, you'll know when you eat or drink affect. You'll know when what you eat or drink affects you, right? Yeah, yeah, you will. Um, if you know what you're looking out for, yeah, definitely. Um, because when you drink milk, you're a bit more. You'll feel the mucus in your throat. It, 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 you, you would ignore it casually, but when it becomes something you've got to maybe keep an eye out for, you'll soon come to realize it and recognize it when you see it. Um. In terms of feeling congested, I wouldn't say I feel more congested when I eat or drink certain things. In terms of eat stuff you eat, 
Ice cream, I find, has a similar effect to milk, mainly because, it's, mainly because that's what it's made of. Um, uh, what other things I eat uh, that may affect it? Um, chocolate. Chocolate's a big one. Um, chocolate, you would definitely hear that more mucusy sound because it can be very thick, especially if it's crappy American chocolate. No offense. Um... Uh, uh, helps when you want to yeah also this is the thing as well sometimes when you're making certain creature sounds especially if it's something fat and blubbery i may i may sneak in a bit of chocolate to help get the mucus up um that sounds a bit that sounds a bit like i'm gonna be sick um help get the mucus production up so if it's, if it's, it's like <laughs> the the warning for eating and drinking stuff is mainly for character work because the main issue you'll have is pops and like <laughs> People don't want to hear. The proximity is useful for creatures, yeah? Yes, it is useful. Just make sure you don't peek. It's easy to peek when you use the proximity effect. So just make sure your audio doesn't peek. But on the whole, really useful. Do you sometimes combine sounds together? I do, but not in the way you may think. I don't layer sounds over one another in post-production. Um, I, in fact, actually make two sounds at the same time. Now... This took experimenting, right? This, this, this took experimenting of me toiling away in my laboratory. Um, but one example I can do is um, this. Let me see what I can do now. <laughs> Stuff like that. I made two sounds and I made the... <laughs> and then... <laughs> like that. So yes, I, I, I do combine sounds sometimes. In terms of combining them in post, like layering them one over the other, I have actually never had to do that. My guy is morbid. Um, I've never had to do that, though. But sometimes I do layer sounds together. And not all sounds are compatible together. So if you can't do two sounds together, maybe it's just not meant to be. For example, I couldn't do... <coughs> with... Um... <coughs> what, what could I actually? This sounds a bit weird. Sound like a broken car. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of experimenting, like I said. Uh, do something first together. Right. <laughs> a lot of people left pretty worrying. Ah, it's all good. You cowards. Anyway. What other points are there for me to cover in terms of creature work? We looked at where to get jobs. We've looked at where how demo reels work in Creature VO. We've looked at how. Hmm. We've looked at how. We've looked at exercises. We've looked at demo reels. We've looked at where to find work. We've looked at giving. Let's let's expand a bit more. Um. Let's expand. Let me see what's actually in the announcements about what I was actually going to talk about. <laughs> Um, right. Yes, right. Uh, breaking down a creature role. This is something I want to expand on a little more. So when it comes to breaking down a creature role, it is very vital to get what we were talking about earlier. That is knowing what they'll be listening for. But for this sense, I want to talk a bit more about if you actually were doing an audition. So let me get up one of my creatures and put them in server event chat. So, so, you, so, so we can have an example for this. One moment. Uh, I really need to clean my desktop. There we are. Let's go with... Let's go with the ghoul. So this is the ghoul spell blighter from Darkest Dungeons, Blackest Reliquary. Um, now, this character, when I looked at them, I immediately started thinking... How can I break this character down? Now, the Ghoul Spellbiter uh, inflicts a lot of debuffs, all right? And one thing, one great way to break down the vocal qualities of a creature is to look at their appearance. Um, is to look at their appearance. Because looking at a creature's appearance can really, really help, um, really help give um, matching vocal qualities. And like Mark just said, body language is really important. If you've noticed, yeah, the ghoul is hunched over. 
So his his voice may be a bit compressed. So he may be a bit like. <laughs> like that. So very hunched and compressed. One thing I noted was he has a candle on his head. Now, the take that booked me the roll was a sound like this. <laughs> but what I thought to myself was, he has a candle on his head. I wonder if his voice sounds a bit like a candle blowing in the wind. So something a bit like a... <laughs> and that was an interesting take. So a great way to break down a creature initially for the vocal qualities is to look at their appearance. For example, let's take a zombie. Some zombies are really dry. You know, they've been wandering through the sandy deserts of Nevada. They're going to sound dry, ragged, a bit like those uh, desert zombies that march around in Minecraft, uh, husks, I think they're called. But let's take a zombie that lives in a swamp. He may be wetter. He may be all blistered from being in the water the whole time. He'll sound different. He'll sound wetter. He may sound heavier, whereas one from the desert may sound skinnier and thinner and lighter. So that, that, that's an example using the Ghoul Spellblighter in terms of breaking down appearance. So let's talk about breaking down a character, character traits from a uh, creature role. Let me go back to the folder I was just in and I'll grab another one of my creature roles. This time we'll go with the creature from EXP War Trauma. Um, let's go with the Hunger. Now, this is the Hunger from EXP War Trauma. Wish this down Steam. Uh, <laughs> and he's a great example of how to break down a creature using character qualities. Now, answer me this. What's he wearing? What does he look like he's wearing? What can you deduce what he's wearing from what I've told you so far? helmet and a jacket what kind of helmet military uniform yes it's a military uniform now that implies that this creature was perhaps military what can you tell from his appearance his shape for example what can you tell from his shape his uh physique what is he or more poignantly what did he used to be? Not, not, not malnourished. Yes, but what I'm asking is, looking at his physique, his form, what do you think he used to be? A soldier. Yeah, he used to be human. He's got a human physique. He's got a human-shaped head. He's got arms. So, we know he's a soldier. We know he's a monster. And we know he used to be human, from what we can gather. What's the title of the game again? What's the title of the game again, if you remember? I'll explain this all in a minute, but I'm just eager to see what you guys can work out. The game is called EXP War Trauma. EXP War Trauma is the name of the game. So, what could that imply about this character? Uh huh. You're getting somewhere now. Be aware, I'm letting you guess this blindly. Um, because I know about this because I got the briefing, which I'll explain to you in a second. So he is a soldier, used to be a soldier, who is now this horrendous monster. From knowing that, yeah, exposed to bombs and burns, maybe he's been shot, who knows how he died. But... When he makes noises, what do you think he could sound like? 
trench foot turned into trench body. Perfect. The sound of suffering. Pain. Agony. EXP war trauma. Yeah, that's a good question, Jaden. That's a good question. Raspy, yep, definitely. So let me fill in the full picture for you folks. The hunger is a manifestation of um, PTSD, is what he is. Now, uh, the trailer for EXP War Trauma, before Krieger, the main character, sees um, the hunger, a voice on the radio tells him that thing represents everything we felt here. We know it's not human, at least it wasn't meant to be. The hunger is a manifestation of pain and agony felt throughout the Second World War. So from that, we could deduce, well, from what I deduced, I think, oh, he's the manifestation of all this pain, his agony. He'll sound like he's in pain. Like everything he does, he'll sound enraged and in agony. And that's exactly what I did. And it fits the character, doesn't it? It's character. Now, I'll establish now, the hunger doesn't speak. To my knowledge, at least. The hunger doesn't speak. He just makes noises. He's almost um, rabid, in a sense. Um, but no, you guys did well there. But for, uh, in doing that, I'm hoping you guys understand what I mean from by breaking down a character to learn more about them and how we can apply that information. Because anyone could have just gone... <laughs> but if you break it down, you can add so much more to it. You can really give the creature character, which will make him stand out so much. So that's how you break down a creature role from using their appearance. Yeah, kind of like character work, yeah. For example, you break down a character's backstory and their want, you do the same for a creature. For example, a zombie has a want, it wants to eat people. It's as simple as that. Let's apply that. Let's hear that. Let's take, um... Let's take, like, a ghost girl. Like, one of those little Japanese ghost girls with the long hair. Think like, um, Sachiko from, Cor um, Sachiko from Corpus Party. You know, they're evil, they're malicious. Um, so let us hear that. Let's hear the glee in, 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 in what they do, you know. And maybe look at the character. Are they fickle? Are they quite thin? Would their voice sound very weak? It's all about breaking down everything in front of you so you can apply that to your performance. It's, re it's really similar to character work. With creature work, you've not got that much to go on because you don't really have a script. You just have noises. Ah, uh, yeah, I just saw a video from Dave from where he said, the way you deliver sound is a manifestation of what you feel when... Yeah, exactly. Whether that be pain, anger, sadistic glee, all that jazz. It's a matter of applying it. So, yeah, exactly like that. What else did I say I'd cover? Because it, it completely slips my mind. Um, right, we've covered how to give uh, character to the creature, how to break down a creature, how to maintain good vocal health for these extreme roles. Yeah, I think, I believe we've covered that. Yeah, and that falls under the umbrella of pain. Yeah, exactly. So, does anyone have any questions regarding everything we've just discussed? Oh, hold on a second. Uh, uh. See if any questions come through. I see folks are typing, so I will, I will wait. Oh. I don't know, are chiropractors any good? Does anyone know a chiropractor and are they actually any good? Do you get hiccups and too, doing too much guttural noises? And how do you and how do you deal with that? Or is that just me? I don't get hiccups. Um, hiccups not a thing I get. Sometimes when I'm doing guttural noises, I will take in a lot of air into my stomach and need to do an, a massive burp. 
Um, I, it's rare for me. Um, and half the time when I do it, I embrace it because usually it fits the character. Like, I'll, I'll feel this and I'll be like, oh, good, perfect timing. Um, in terms of how to deal with it, I think the issue with that is instead of taking air into your lungs, you're starting to take air into your stomach. And naturally, air doesn't really belong there. So you've got to uh, burp it or hiccup it back up. Um, so when you do breathing, just be mindful not to be too sharp or too quick. Um, and make sure you are breathing properly. I know that sounds funny, but sometimes breathing non-properly, is that a word? Um, can cause such things. Where's a good place to get a role for a creature? I've discussed this already, but I'll go over it again. Um, a great place to get roles is the same place you'd go to get any audition. Um, the only issue is creature, creature roles are s much rarer to see in auditions. Um, Self-marketing is a great way to get creature roles. Uh, for example, I email a lot of people saying like, Oh, hey, um, I see you're making this really cool game. It's cool animation. I like this. I like that. Um, I, I say about what I like about the project. And I say, would you like, you know, would you be interested in a voiceover? Because I'd love to be a part of your cast. And here's my material. And sometimes folks will go, ah, um, we don't want you for this character role. But we love this creature stuff. Can we have you for this instead? And I'll go, oh, yes, yes, why not? There's a webcomic coming out soon called Have a, uh, Have a Futful Christmas, um, in which there was a casting call for a character, and I sent them my website. And they got back to me saying, hey, we don't want you for the part, but we want you to voice the main creature, because we just, we just love the stuff that was on your website. So self-marketing is a key way to get creature work. Um, and for that, you will need a demo reel. But if you don't have a demo reel, Samples are always okay. That's a, that's an advice I saw Jun Yoon give on Twitter once. He was like, he was like, if you don't have a demo reel, having samples is okay. I'm not sure if that was a good impression of him. I don't think it was. <laughs> um, yeah. So just keep your eyes open for roles. Um, Casting Call Club, uh, Twitter, Discord, anywhere you can. Keep your eyes peeled. But yes. Um, is there anything else I'm forgetting to cover? You have to forgive me, my memory escapes me very often. Hmm. Have you used human sounds as noises to combine or imitate in creature work? Have you used human sounds as noises to combine? What do you mean by that exactly? Oh, uh, yes. So I do use some human sounds, for example. Oh, yes, yes. Um, for example, um, something that may, like a demon is a great example for a laugh. Um, demons may do a laugh in their own fashion. So a normal human may be like, <laughs> a demon may be like, um, <laughs> coughing, for example, you've got, <coughs> or maybe you've got like a zombie cough where it's like, <coughs> So yes, I do. Oh, my back. I, I see a few. Thank you very much, Fierce Taint. I see a few more people typing, so I want to see if any more questions come through. Several people are typing. I always get intimidated when I see several people are typing, especially in servers where there is a bit of a disaster. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry, I keep burping. I'm so fucking sorry. Have you ever done creature work in a mocap space? Um, <laughs> no, no, I haven't, and I'm, I'm very sad I haven't. But I hope to one day. Um, if so, how is the process like? Uh, unfortunately, I have no clue. I'm afraid I've never done mocap work. I would love to, though. I'd love to be in a nice skin-tight suit and waddle around.
Yes, yeah, so I think, I believe I've covered everything that is on my list. So, if anyone has any final questions regarding anything we've talked about, whether it's character breaking down, whether it's demo reels, whether it's exercises, classes you can take, ask them now. Because after that, I believe we will wrap this up. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I was wondering if you use the same equipment for all your roles. No, I don't change anything. Uh, my setup stays exactly the same. I've got my microphone here. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays exactly the same. The only thing I'll change is the gain. That's literally it. Can you give me a quick ra rundown of demo reels? Um, Phoebe, will this whole stream be available to watch after? Because if so, I think we can just refer them refer them over to that. Um, what is your setup? My setup, right? I, I wish I could get my web. I could turn my webcam on. I don't know. I can't. Um, I would turn my webcam on, but you just see my desk. So I have a, a insulated booth. Um, padding which is falling. Um, from the ceiling. I have acoustic blankets. I have rock wall insulation on the back wall. In terms of my setup, I use an SE2300, it's an XLR microphone. Um, I have a keyboard and a mouse in here. I have a monitor as well. I also have a Focusrite Scarlett Solo Gen 3 interface. I have a pair of, um, what the hell are these things called? Uh, Biodynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohm. Good headphones, basically. Because if you use a gaming headset, um, they said they have added bass to them, so you don't really hear true sound. Um, and then I use Adobe Audition. That that that's my setup. What I do need though is a chair. Can I do the zombie laugh again? Yes, of course I can. That's my, that's my zombie laugh. Okay, right, that's the bane of my existence. I can't do the zombie announcer from um, Call of Duty. I can't do it, it's really weird. I can't do the zombies either, because the zombies from COD are so shrieky, and shrieks are one of the things I can't really do too well. Oh, physical manipulation is a good one. Um... So, in terms of physical manipulation, um, I do do a bit. I oftentimes have my hand on, um, like, my throat. I don't, I'm not pressing it hard. I'm not choking myself or anything. I just have it there, and I may push back a little bit. Um, but I make sure it doesn't hurt. It helps, uh, helps add a bit of buffer, like a... So, uh, that's one thing I do. In terms of um, tapping... Uh, the throw. I do that sometimes. One famous example of doing that is, um, what's it? Um, t uh, Tom Kane, who plays, not Tom Kane? The chap, I think it's Tom Kane. Is it the chap who plays Spongebob? Yeah, Tom Kane. Ch chap who plays Spongebob. Um, that's not Tom Kane, is it? I'm thinking of someone else. I'm thinking of someone else. No, it's not Tom Kane. It's Yoda, isn't it? Fuck, who am I thinking of? Tom Kane. I, I, I don't think it's bothering me now. Tom Kenny, that's it. Forgive me, Tom Kenny. Um, yeah, Tom Kenny. Um, he's the voice of SpongeBob, and many of you may know what SpongeBob's laugh sounds like. And he does that by tapping on his throat. He's like, ah! like that, and it gives that sort of wavy effect to it. I do that sometimes. For example, um, when I was doing the Dullers, I think I did a bit of that. So it was like, um. <laughs> Stuff like that. And then I also mentioned closing off your nose as well. Um, which is another bit of physical manipulation. Right. Move face on Tom Kenny. Bye, Silver. Um, I have a background in animal biology and zoology. Lucky. Would you say uh, my profession and... Prof yeah, that can be beneficial. One thing, do you want to know what D. Bradley Baker does when he's uh, experimenting with noises? And this is what I do sometimes. He will watch nature documentaries. Like, he'll listen to sounds and try and imitate them. He'll literally, he'll sit on the sofa and like watch nature documentaries and go, 
<laughs> like that. Well, uh, there's um, if you, after, after some of this class, you can go on the YouTube channel Great Big Story, and they did a uh, one with D. Bradley Baker. And one thing he'll do is he'll go looking for bugs in his back garden. And there's a clip of him in his kitchen with his iPad. And he just puts it to the camera and goes, oh, look at that ant. <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time. But yeah, no doubt that'd be beneficial. Uh, just listen to them. Listen to how they sound. Try and imitate it. And that's, that's something you can then combine with your other skills. So do we have any other questions? I don't think we have any remaining. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Thunderqueef. <laughs> um, yes, if no one has any questions, I think we can. Uh, I think we can wrap this up. Um... I'll see what these remaining folks are typing, but uh, if there are no more questions regarding what the deal is, um, I'd like to thank everyone very much for coming. Uh, we'll see what this uh, Fierce Taint and Mark have to say. And then uh, dinner time for you. Okay, cool. All right, I want to thank everyone for coming. This was a lovely, lovely little thing that I very much enjoyed doing. I will be... I, I, will I? Yeah, I think so. Um... Um, but yes, I want to thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for listening and taking part. I do hope I was able to teach you something. Um, and yes, I think that about covers it. So thank you very much for having me.